Okay, thank you for tuning in to Stampscaping 101. This is a video, kind of a, a beginnering video, just in terms of um, kind of an approach to compositions. How do you build a composition, you know? How do you approach kind of a, how, how do you start, you know, kind of the, the build and um, what comes first, what comes second, you know, and how do you finish off a scene just in terms of the imagery, okay? This isn't doesn't go into things like coloring, but it does go into considerations as far as what colors you would stamp out, something like a sky. This is how I started off everyone in my workshops. After I talked about the concept and I showed them how to how I place colors, what we all did was we went back and sat down and I had a lot of stamps in front of everyone and I would say, okay, to keep things simple, if you haven't done any scenic stamping before, I want you to pick out some kind of main image, meaning like this is a water mill, this one's a lighthouse, cabin, a uh, waterfall down here, lakeside cove, okay? Something like that. Then I would say think about some kind of sky you want to add into your scene. Not every scene is going to have things like skies, okay? Like I wouldn't do it in this scene that I just stamped out in my last video. I would just put some color up there, but for the sake of that workshop, just to keep things really simple, I would say pick out some kind of sky element that we can fill in that area above our main imagery, okay? They would pick that out. Then I would talk about um, color schemes. What color kind of color scheme do you want your scene to be? If it's a moonlit night or something like that, chances are you wouldn't stamp out that moon in red. Or something like that. Not that you couldn't, you know, we talk about doing some funky color schemes for dramatic um, purposes in one of my videos, and I love kind of unusual color schemes and whatnot. We don't always have to keep this kind of whatever photorealistic and, or something like that, but they would pick out some kind of sky figure, and they would stamp it in a color that they're color scheme is going to be in the end result, okay? So if you're going to have a moonlit night and you want it to kind of be cool blues or whatever, they stamped out their sky figure in blue. If we want kind of cool, interesting violets going on in a milky way, then now I added a lot of different tones in my impression here, but it was violets and blues and pinks in the um, color scheme that I used. High noon scene, which is some cool, soft, billowy light clouds. I just stamped that in the light blue, okay? So, two different spaces. Foreground, background, all right? Now, in this video, what I did was I just show you what you, you know, how a scene can change uh, in terms of depth by adding in some foreground. I used my reed stamp a lot in this one. I just stamped out these reeds. This one has this little fence in the background too, but just putting these little reeds in the foreground here suddenly makes that the foreground, and this the midground, and that's the background, okay? These are just simple little things you can do in terms of, you know, starting off in your kind of a scenic stamping journey and easy ways to start off with, you know, so it doesn't have to be kind of uh, confusing as far as the process goes. For me, this is how I approach most of my scenes that I do. I'm not thinking about all those details that I end up adding in at the end. Like, for example, I love using little gel pen highlights, um, paint pens. I like to do um, things with my pigment inks or something like that, but I'm not even thinking about that when I'm starting off a composition. I'm just thinking about my imagery. If it's a cabin like this and I stamp it in the middle of my scene, then I have to do some kind of filler grass around it just to kind of tie it in with the sides. But, um, I mean, there might be, if I'm doing an eight and a half by 11, there has to be a lot more planning out that's going on. These are just like card sizes, okay? So I'm not really thinking about a ton of different compositional elements. It's usually a main image or two, you know, background and lighting or something like that. I don't, if you watch my videos, most of the times I don't even head in the foreground until the end, okay? Because I keep the compositional and structure of these scenes really simple to begin with, okay? 
And I usually just kind of wait till the end result to figure out what I'm going to stamp in. Now, if I if I know I'm going to do some hikers or something like that in a scene, then, you know, I'm going to leave space in here, you know, to stamp them. Or if I'm doing a, whatever, a Father's Day card or something like that, and if I'm going to have a fisherman, I've got to, I've got to leave room for him in the composition, so that's a consideration to do, too. You can stamp those main subjects right from the beginning, but a lot of times even with subject matter like hikers or a fisherman or a boat or something like that. A lot of times I just kind of wait till the end and I just kind of stamp that down. Birds or something like that, for the sake of this video I stamped them to begin with. But a lot of times I just kind of wait till I bring all my colors in there and I, I want a real super crisp impression of it, so I'll stamp it in the end. And that, when I talk about in this video, becomes a layer of depth in itself. So anyways, what you can basically kind of think about this video as is three layers of depth, okay? Foreground, midground, and background. And just this is a simple way to approach those three spaces in your compositional builds, okay? It's not even really thinking of three in the beginning, it's thinking of two. Foreground, background, main image, sky, okay? So anyways, I uh, hope that helps. And uh, if it's kind of a mystery as to far as where to start, um, especially if you're kind of new to stamping, scenic stamping, or new to stamping in general, and you, you know, you just kind of jump right into the scenic stamping um, realm, this is kind of a my easy approach to it. And like I said, it's an approach that I still use myself and always have. My scenes can potentially get more complex at times, okay? something like this, but it's the exact same concept. And if you think about it in terms of stamping out your main imagery, cabin, and my, instead of my background being a cloud, it just happens to be those mountains in the background. So instead of stamping a sky imagery, it's just stamping, you know, this land imagery. It's just a little bit farther off in the distance. Things like these grass textures in here, it's the same grass textures that are used in this scene right here. All right, I just use more of it. And I fill in with some additional reeds like that. Here's some reeds down here. And I stamped in some additional trees in here. So it's, this is just as easy um, as far as a composition as this one would be. I just do a little bit more of it. And I'm talking about the difference between this half page scene and this one is probably, I don't know, three minutes of extra stamping. I stamped it with those trees in the meadow down, you know, out here, if this was the main image. And I stamped in some additional little, you know, spindly things just to make that meadow area seem a little bit more interesting with some imagery. But all these trees right here are the same tree, okay? Anyways, hope this video comes in handy for those either new to it, like I said, or those kind of, you know, that haven't been scenic stamping for a while and they want to kind of pull them out again and think about, okay, let me see, how do you start those off again or whatnot? If you have any questions, always just write it in the comment section below and we'll try to get back to it. If there's any scenes you want to see stamped out uh, or um, techniques shown, I can do that in another video. And uh, anyways, thanks for tuning in and taking a look at the Stampscapes channel. Okay, I have a huge amount of stamps scattered all around me right here. And that's because I'm going to do some uh, stamping basics as far as compositional um, structures go within your scenes. Um, sometimes people get these stamps and um, it's understandable that um, people run into kind of the issue of uh, what do you start with um, in terms of making a scene, okay? A lot of cards, um, greeting cards, and I don't know, I would say, I don't know what the word would be, maybe traditional stamping or something like that. A lot of things exist kind of more on a 
uh, with less dimension and depth, okay? If you're using word stamps and uh, imagery to go along with it, you know, birthday greetings, something like that. Often things exist kind of m more in a, a maybe a, I don't know the word I'm looking for. It's, it, everything's on two dimensions, but things don't look like they're supposed to be, you know, there's a, a mile of space within, you know, a greeting card or something like that, like scenic stamping, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to break down the, the process into um, something that's uh, kind of maybe easier to uh, follow for um, the beginner, all right? So what we have in scenic stamping quite often, this is a scene that I just stamped out, is I kind of break it down into kind of main imagery, filler stamps to go around it, okay? Background and foreground, all right? So we have background, midground right here, which usually contains our main imagery and foreground. Not not every scene is going to have those, you know, three different elements in it. Um, but, uh, you know, I don't know, maybe, I don't know what percentage it would be, but um, but it's a lot that it would have those different types of uh, um, spaces within uh, a given scene, okay? Now, when I say background, I'm talking about background imagery, like mountains or something like that, okay? Background can also be sky, but I usually put that into a different category. So this, I'll show you the way that I started off my workshops. For the beginning stamper back when I used to teach uh, more workshops, but um, what I would do is I would just break down the process into a really easy one, okay? I would just say um, I was teaching a lot of color kind of theory in the class as well, but um, when we approached our compositions, everyone's sitting around, there might have 15, 20 people in the workshop or something like that. I would have people kind of pick out what kind of main imagery they would be doing, okay? Now it's not always going to be like this because, I don't know, sometimes you can just stamp grass in a scene or something like that, a meadow, okay? And it's not going to, going to contain something like a real central focal point like a cabin like that or a lighthouse. If you stamp a lighthouse in a scene, let's say there's 20 other surrounding images, rocks, ocean, clouds, sky, birds, a fishing boat in the water, so, you know, something like that, um, foreground foliage or something like that. That lighthouse is really going to be what the scene is about. That's the same thing with these cabins. Things like structures are real kind of focal points, okay? If you stamp out the lakeside cove, it's really, your scene's going to be about a lake, okay? If you stamp a, uh, you know, a fairly large little brook, waterfall, whatever, um, that's, you know, it's going to be a large element within a scene if you're making, you know, a traditional card size um, piece, all right? So I would have people pick out something, one of these types of images, okay? Could be an autumn uh, bank like that or something of that sort. All right, so they would pick out some kind of thing like that, all right? Let's just keep some of these out here like that, okay? And then, just to simplify things, I would say, okay, you have your main image. Now, pick out some kind of thing that's going to be going on in your sky. So what is it going to be about? Is it going to be it now? <laughs> okay, I was sitting there thinking, here's a cloud. I just want clouds in my sky. On this cabin, I want it to be a moonlit um, cabin for this lighthouse. Um, let's say I want it to have, this could be a moon or a sun, depending on what color you do it. That could be in the background, and for this um, Lakeside Cove, I want there to be a lot of sky, uh, stars in my sky, I want a Milky Way or something like that, okay? And uh, this is just a rubber piece only. 
this is a snowy bank. Let's say the snowy bank has, um, oh, let's just say the same moon here, okay? So we're just talking about two different things going on in the scene to start off with, just to simplify it. And that's what we would start off with. We wouldn't even have to think about what goes around this cabin, what's going around the waterfall, Lakeside Cove, uh, light rocks and waves, or that snowy bank, okay? Just two different things right now. We have kind of main image and we have sky going on, okay? All right, so let's just start working with some of these. I might mix these up, you know, when I start stamping, because I'll forget what I matched up with what, but I think you'll get the, the point here. But let's kind of start off. Let's do, I don't know. These are just going to be stamp sketches. I'm not going to finish all these off, because it just, you know, it'll be a you know, a three hour video here, you know, finishing off each scene to completion, but let's do something with this, okay? All right, now I'm going to be doing a lot of imagery here, so I don't think I need to do a video just based on inking up a pad like that. If these pads haven't been re-inked in a long time, sometimes when you put this ink on here, it kind of beads and it sits on there for a while, sometimes up to like five, 10 minutes or something. Then it kind of soaks in. But um, when you have a pad that's been inked up or it's been pretty moist, it just soaks right in, okay? This is a Marvy black pad, by the way, but that's not uh, necessary in terms of a uh, brand. Okay, so we're just going to go with our main image right here. Let's see, where do I want it? I've done a central uh, lighthouse in a while. I usually stamp it kind of off to the, you know, the rule of thirds type of thing. Let's play around with some compositions while we're doing this too, maybe. I like to stamp out things that I haven't, I don't know, done in a while. Okay, so we have our main image. And let's go with, I'm gonna start clearing off some images as I use them to make room. Let's go with this moon. Okay, now here's the thing now too. We're thinking about two different things right now in terms of the imagery, um, in terms of the land elements, okay? I stamped out my lighthouse here. Now I'm thinking about what color do you want your scene to be, just in general? Well, if this is a moon, I mean, chances are, I mean, you can go with some funky colors, you know, and I have some videos on it. You can do a purple moon if you want to, all right? But generally, the color of your light source, and if you have, you know, your imagery here, usually the colors in my scene kind of reflect the colors of the light source, right? So let's say this is going to be a sun or a sunset or something like that, uh, a glowing yellow sun. I would stamp it out in one of the colors that um, this light source is going to be casting. So let's just make this into a moon. I like to do cool color moons, okay? In the cool spectrum, blues, purples, blue-green, something like that, violet, all right? So, if it's going to be a cool, bluish-toned scene. Now, in this scene right here, because that lighthouse is kind of really... Uh, there's a lot of just sharp angles to it. What I do is I mask that off a bit. I know this might be a case that would be good to have a existing mask. Sometimes people just have a post-it note. They cut it out once and they keep that for every time they use the same image. But for my purposes here, I'll just use this little ripped paper towel. What I'm getting at right here is if this moon kind of form, these things go beyond, behind the, uh, the lighthouse, I'm going to want to mask that off so I don't have those forms running through the lighthouse. Like, especially up in the light section. Okay. 
There's our mask, right? Easy enough. Okay, so we have our main image and our background. Now, in this case, if I want some more of those um, kind of cloudy forms going on in the background, I, I don't want two moons in this scene, but I'm just going to fill this in a little bit. Overlapping the first image, okay. Okay, now I'll need a little bit of the bottom portion of this. Let me wipe off the top portion a little bit, okay. This is still just thinking about two different areas, okay. This is still... Um, I didn't press hard enough there, so just fill in. This is still just thinking about two different areas. Land and sky, okay. Main image and sky. Okay, let's see if I can get a little bit more of that in there. Let's wipe off some of this bob. I'm just gonna go for a second impression here. Okay, kind of watching the moon. I don't want two moons. And something like that, okay? So we have main image, sky in the background, okay? That's kind of a good foundation. Now, there's accompanying stamps once in a while for our main imagery, okay? And then there's some general filler images. This one happens to be, you can use some water around this, like this, and which I'll do in some of these other water scenes, but this one, this stamp happens to have this stamp called um, Rocks and Waves. one's number 235e is an Edward so I'm filling in now if I only if I only had the light rocks and wave stamps what what I could do is I could color in just this um, bottom portion of it and not color in the top of it and I can use this portion off to the sides as well okay that's the beauty of landscape scenic air scenic stamping you can use certain parts of your imagery just for the parts that you want, okay? So, just in general, main image, sky, okay? And that's what we would start coloring in. But I'll work some foreground in this later, okay? Let's just start off with these two simple elements in terms of um, space within a card, all right? Okay, let's go to our next scene, okay? Let's go with this mill here. This is called the uh, Water Mill Large. Now you could take the time to add some variation to your image by coloring in the mill, maybe some brown or something like that and put some green into your trees something of that sort but just to keep this um, lesson here as simple as possible let's see which way do I want to do this I'll do this like this or do I want to do this like this I'll go vertical portraiture okay large stamps get plenty of pressure in the middle. I'm standing up when I do these larger stamps just so I can get some good pressure in the middle and I'm working my sides like this. I always have a big stack of uh, copy paper, just some scrap blotter paper. You can use a newspaper or something like that and that provides some good cushion. All right, so we have our image stamped out. It's kind of our subject matter, our main image. And what sky do we want behind it? I don't remember what I had, but let's just put some clouds, okay? Let's just keep this um, like a high noon scene, bright sunlight, some clouds around. Let's just go with a this one would be good to do kind of in browns too, like an old sepia print or something like that. Sepia, sepia, however you pronounce it. 
So this is just a light blue, okay? And this is using the cloud cumulus. I'm not going to take the time to mask this off. I, I could mask off the top of my roof a little bit, but not going to bother. If I get a little bit of that light blue, because I'm going with a much lighter color, if it was going with a dark blue or something like that, or a black for these clouds, then I would do, um, I would mask that off probably. But I don't know if you can see it there. There's a little bit of that light blue going into that rooftop, but the nature of these stamps, you know, that's not going to matter. Okay, so you see what I did there, stamped it once, and then I stamped it again. I changed the angle a little bit. I have a video on um, how to do sky imagery and how to make it not look so boxy. Okay, light, even pressure, or I don't know, not light, but firm, even pressure. Don't rock your stamps like this, you know, otherwise you get the edges really pronounced, okay? And you don't want that up in the sky. You want it nice and seamless, okay? All right, so we have our main image, sky. In this case, in, in this situation, that it's basically foreground, background, right? Okay, let's go with our next composition. Easy stuff, right? I'll go to workshops or something like that, and someone will joke, no, that was hard, you know. Uh, one stamp, two, three. No masking at all, right? And then I look at some of their, you know, some people's constructions, those big, huge accordion things, or things, you know, pop-ups everywhere, and I'm thinking, that looks hard to me. Or, uh, I don't know, it doesn't look hard, but it looks time-consuming. So I tend to think this is easy, because, you know, I don't do masking, I'm not cutting out a million things. Uh, I love those cards, though, but uh, in terms of uh, comparatively, I generally think, I don't know, those ones look very complex, you know, where scenic stamping, I, I tend to think it's, you know, for me, it's very, uh, it's very simple. All right, um, here's some, this cabin stamp right here. All right. Now, th this one will be a good example on kind of doing more of a peekaboo type of uh, sky image because this stamp is fairly large. That's one of those things early on too when people are kind of getting getting into the swing of scenic stamping. It's it's not being concerned about. Um, using a stamp in its entirety. Like I said, you can be going off the page. I just used a portion of this stamp over here, right? And it filled in in three different areas to fill in the sky. But uh, let's do that again here. Let's use, I don't want a second cabin, but I want some of this tree to fill out this space right here. I don't know if it's going to fill it out completely, but we'll get some of it into the scene. It's kind of this repetition of imagery, all right? Something like that. But going back to that thing, um, using certain portions of the stamp, again, within a scene that you want, all right? Repetition of imagery, clouds, you know, you can use multiple times, like word stamps or something like that. A lot of times people use words in terms of like a greeting card, right? I mean, you could use it to, you know, for some effect, happy birthday, happy birthday, happy birthday, happy birthday, or something like that. But, you know, I don't think someone would stamp out something like an image or something like that and put like a thinking of you, thinking of you, thinking of you, thinking of you, or something like that in a card. You could, but uh, I, I usually don't see that. All right, now I should have grabbed a sun image or something like that. Let's just do a moon again, all right? Let's say this cabin is going to be in deep moonlight, though. So let's make this moon a little bit darker. Let's go to more of a navy blue, okay? Let's zoom in here a little bit. So still, this is basically, you know, foreground, and we're going background with this, okay? 
I don't need to mask off my trees because they are black. And when you're doing the transparent dark blue over black, you're going to see the black is going to be more prominent, okay? So what I was getting at, you know, is having things overlapping something, kind of more of a peekaboo moon, you know, you can have, I think it's very dramatic to have a tree in front of it or something, birds flying in front of it or something of like that sort. So you don't always have to have full stamp represented in terms of the visuals of what you can see. You can have it behind something, right? Okay, now, if you've seen my sky video, it's like one of the first two or three videos, then, you know, we're talking about kind of filling in some imagery out here, and I'll just use the same cloud to fill in some additional clouds, okay? In a scene like this, too, I don't know if I would see all of the, uh, the clouds in here once I got all that filled, and I want that moon to really pop out at me, so I'd probably make the area around here quite a bit darker. But that's your foundation right there. We have foreground, background, land and sky, okay? Main subject, background. Like I said, we're not always going to have um, some kind of sky imagery in a scene. Like this one right here. This is kind of busy enough without having some kind of clouds or moons back there. You certainly could, though. But I would just do a few streaks of color in there, something of that sort, for something like this. I figure I have enough going on down here. I don't necessarily need a moon it there. It would be interesting, though, if I did this all in kind of blue tones or something like that, and I had a full moon kind of either setting or rising from that horizon. That would look cool, too. I don't know. That gives me an idea on this. When I did this scene featuring all warm tones and stuff like that, maybe I'll, since I already have this stamped out, maybe I'll make this into a cool scene, and that'll be another video. But we'll see. Okay. Let's, let's go on to... Um, I already stamped out that cabin. I'm not going to do this one, okay? This is just a smaller version of it. Oh, here, I have this kind of mackerel sky. Um, let's use that one with something, okay? This is, I don't know, I feel like I'm in a workshop again where I just kind of talk, you know, I, I say the same thing over and over and over and over. <laughs> Okay, let's go with this waterfall here. This is called Babbling Brook. Okay. Let's use that. Maybe we'll use that one in a couple different uh, tones. I mean this, the mackerel sky. Okay. Waterfall. Babbling Brook. I called it Babbling Brook because I already had other, uh, other stamps with falls in it. Cascading falls, gushing falls. You can't name everything the same thing. All right. Let's go with this. Let's stamp it a little bit lower because I know I have that um, mackerel sky and I want to get enough of that in the scene. Some scenes won't even have any sky, you know, that you do. If you stamp kind of this higher up on the composition, then it would be more about the foreground and what's happening below these falls than what's happening in the falls and in back of the falls, okay? Meaning if I stamp this way up here, you know, I don't know, sometimes I sneak a sky into my reflections if it's a water scene, but you know, that's another thing. Okay, we have the sides here. I don't know, I have these other, this other image called um, boulders with lichen that you can use on the side, but for the sake of this video, I'm just going to use the sides again of this for my continuation of the main image, which is this, you know. So we have some waterfalls going on like that. You can see it like so, okay. Let me get rid of that bottom piece of paper so you can kind of see more of what it looks like. Okay. Foreground or main image, whatever you want to call it, okay? Let's say my 
sun, my, not sun, but my uh, sky is starting to turn with the time of day. It's becoming more of a, oh, sunset twilight, that type of thing, okay? Um, gold tones, brown tones, pink and orange, purple, whatever. Let's do a, let's see what color I want to work with here. All right, where's my, where's a brown tone? Here we go. Let's try something here, actually. I'm some of the, I get, I get tired of doing the same thing over and over again. Um, in terms of repetition, that's why all my scenes are different. So I've been working with one color blue up in my sky, so I'm gonna mix it up. I'm talking about doing the same thing in a row. Like I just stamped out a single color. I feel like adding some variation into my impression here. So let's go with some, that was some brown and I'm working some pink into it. Let's add a little bit of a, kind of some color excitement. This is a dye-based marker. These are dye-based pads, okay? Brownish pink tones, okay? Now I've added some streaks in here. I didn't color up the whole thing. I just added some streaks here. So some areas you'll have a mixture of this brown and pink. They're kind of real similar in value, right? Okay. All right, here we go. So in here, in some areas, you'll find this kind of mixture of the two. All right. So I can stamp it like that. I can put it at an angle for drama. Let's use our mask here. You can see I've used this as a mask before, but it's just the paper towel. And let's go for something like this. Okay. Yeah, some of it got into my waterfalls, but chances are I'm going to use some of that color on my rocks anyways, because the colors of the uh, area down here are often reflective of the colors that are going on in the sky. If you have um, kind of golden light shining on a white surface, right? That white surface is going to be those colors, okay? Same thing with this, especially things like water. It's going to be very reflective of what's going on in the sky. Okay, we're just filling out this area again. All right, so we have our kind of mackerel sky working in our water. I mean, working over our waterfall. All right. Let's do, before I forget to, my unmounted stamp right here is the snowy bank. I need a fairly large acrylic block for that. And I have my tack and peel material on my block right here. So this is nice and tacky as you can hear. Okay. If it ever gets less tacky, it's because your unmounted stamps have some dust on it, and over time you put those stamps onto the tacky tack and peel, okay? It's no big deal. All you have to do is just take this whole thing, just rinse off your tack and peel, and it's super tacky again. That's great. bank. All right, quite a long stamp. All right, there's our snowy bank, like so. 
thing about snow is there's less kind of detail in the uh, image because it's snow. <laughs> um, so that being said, when I do these designs, snow snow is harder for me to draw than I don't know another image like this waterfall because you have to kind of say less or say as much with less as you know and I still want my forms to be I still want areas to represent depth so it's done in just really subtle things like you have to put little rocks or something like that in there but not to get away from what this video is about let's go with I, I love doing moonlit snow scenes because snow is supposed to represent kind of a a cold um, environment, right? It's during winter, probably. And uh, I make it colder by making it nighttime. I tell you what, let me do this in that dark blue again. A nice deep midnight blue. How's that? Hmm. Let's do something. Let's put this. Let's put this moon. Talking about before. Let's do this moon kind of. I'll see if I can kind of have it peeking up from a little bit behind that bank. Okay, I've masked off the bank. Okay. What's that? That moon's going to be like this. Either setting or rising moon. All right, but now we have those, the area around it again, right? So let's go and fill in with some additional clouds. Now I'm going to take this cloud. I'm going to flip it upside down because it looks like the light is coming from whatever direction you put this in. It looks like the light is coming from above, right? The tops of the billows are light. So. If the moon is coming from kind of the horizon, I'm gonna flip this around so it looks like it's underlit, okay? Be sure and re-ink in between impressions. Just light even pressure. When I use this cloud, I usually put my finger in the middle here. And that's, again, I don't want to get, not that this is a video on sky, but see, I don't want these edges to be so pronounced, right? So I just kind of go like this, and I go central pressure. You can do that on an acrylic block or wood, however you have this mounted. Okay, and... Let's see, let's mask this off a little bit. All right, now I have this little bit in here. I'll just come like this. And again, it's not gonna look this busy because I would color in a lot of this area on the outside when I start doing my toning, right? So the edges would become much darker, but it looks kind of busy now because it's just, just the bare, stamping of the, the imagery, okay? So it'd get darker out here and it'd get lighter as it moved towards that moon. I think that would make a pretty dramatic scene. I would have maybe some moonlight shining on this uh, um, snow right here, coming across here. Maybe put some trees with some dramatic shadows being cast by them, you know, with a tree planted in here, but maybe make a shadow using some uh, alcohol pens or something like that across the snow and have that snow still fairly light and shimmering and reflective. Snow is a very reflective uh, surface. All right, now let's do something with, um, let's go with our Lakeside Cove. All right, I am clearing off imagery off my desk here. 
as I do this video, it's kind of nice to, uh, because I just got everything uncluttered here. I, I just washed all my stamps, but I wanted to get this video in for our customers new, fairly new to scenic stamping. We want to get this kind of entire process really simplified. And believe me, this is how I approach my scenes to where it's, I know how to use all my scenes, of course, you know, I've been doing it for a very long time, but this is how I start, you know, in my mind. I, I'm not thinking about, now it might not be um, main image and sky, okay? But I'm just thinking about, I'm not thinking about this entire composition in my head. It's just, that's too many elements, you know, when I start off. I just stamped out my cabin and my pond, and I filled in around it, okay? Instead of stamping a cloud in the background, it's just simply doing that mountain in the background, okay? So it's just thinking, I'm not thinking about five layers of depth, or something like that in my head, usually, okay? And now, I might do a scene where it's larger, and I'm thinking, okay, like, that scene that I just held up was um, a scene that I did for... Uh, you know, it was going to be a magazine spread. So I took a lot of time, and there's several layers of depth. There's layer, there's layers of depth within a layer of depth, you know, like in my foreground right here, I might have two different sizes of those reeds, you know, just to create a little bit more variation and tweak this, where it's kind of seemingly a much deeper space, okay? But that's because it was going to be in a magazine, you know, and I have the, you know, whatever the pressure's on. <laughs> you know, that's going to be uh, seen by, you know, the readers of that magazine. And, uh, you know, I don't know. It's an honor to be asked to be in something like that. So, you know, I take a little bit of extra time, but... Um, I don't know, that's why I did it kind of in a larger spread. This is like Side Cove. But yeah, I, I'm not really thinking about, you know, you don't have to think of a final composition in terms of uh, every element that's going to be in a scene. Now, I might be doing, uh, let me see, I got a, you know, Father's Day coming up, and I want to do, you know, Dad likes fishing, so I'm going to add a fisherman into a scene, okay? I, I mean, I might think about things like that. Okay, I'm going to stay in the lake. Uh, he gets up early in the morning, I'm going to do a sunrise, and, um, you know, uh, someone in fisherman, okay? That's three elements or something like that that I'm thinking about, you know, time of day, setting, and subject matter, okay? Or something like that, but, you know, I don't have to think about, um, you know, how many gel pen dots am I going to put, you know, as far as the highlights on the rocks, and what color am I going to make that rock, or something like that, you know, I'm not, you don't have to think about so many things like that. Okay, let's go with a, or try to, let's do an interesting color scheme for my Milky Way, okay? Let's go with the, let's go with the pale violet here. purplish tone. This pale violet is almost I think, the same color as my uh, rubber here. Couldn't tell if it was inked up or not. It is. Okay. I like to bring in some variation into a lot of my sky imagery. This could be in the clouds or whatever. Here's some blue. Again, this is a dye-based ink. I'm not going to mix up, like, uh, alcohol inks and dye-based inks or something like that, okay? So adding some streaks in here where I put a little bit more blue, it's probably going to look more blue, and where I have just pure violet, it'll look more pure violet. Uh, let's use some of this pink in here, too, okay? Now this is this image right here. It's kind of it's a lot of uh, it's made up of dots, but there's a lot of solids on it, so I can do something like this and hopefully get a lot of variation in the impression. 
Okay, now I don't need to cover up the uh, the trees because they're solid black again. But I do if I'm going to stamp this real low like that. Okay, and I'm going to be going into those rocks. Maybe I'll mask off the rocks, but I'm just going to put it like that, right over those trees. Okay. Crazy, huh? But I really like it. See all those colors in there? Do you see the uh, the violet, the blue streaks? Some areas that I didn't streak it at all are probably just the pure pale violet. But you see that streak in there, like that? That's the pink that's streaked against the uh, the blue. It's the beauty of uh, using dye-based inks. That's another reason why I like to use them because you get a lot of variation due to the overlapping of hue, color, okay? All right, gotta fill in this area out here. Okay, my battery ran out of juice. Just put on a fresh one, okay. You see, that's a pretty seamless uh, overlap there, even with something as hard-edged and solid as this. It's because I overlapped a good amount and I changed the angle, okay? And we'll need to do that over here. I'll bring in some of this, or I could use this side again. It doesn't really matter. Okay, let's go like that. When I'm doing these little side things, I'm not too particular about mixing in a ton of color because this the edges get really dark anyway okay overlapping change the angle a little bit it's probably overlapping between a quarter inch and about a half inch quite a bit right that's why I don't need a, too much masking you know at all in this type of thing now if I want to I could bring some of this Milky Way into these uh, the water down here as kind of like a reflection maybe I'll do that I won't re-ink this, I'll just go for a subtle kind of impression of it down here. Okay, something like that. Is it reflecting exactly what's going up in the sky? No. But for me, that doesn't matter when I start bringing in all my colors, okay. I'm really itching to finish some of these scenes off, by the way. As I start doing this, I just want to, I want to color them in. But For me, uh, I wouldn't say it's torture, but I really do have this kind of this itch to uh, to start finishing some of these off. You know, I want to stamp. I want to. I want to color. All right. Okay. So we have foreground or main image, and we have sky. Okay. Now this is generally the point where we start bringing in colors into our scene, okay? We start with the toning process. Sometimes things are gonna have a background hill or something of that sort, okay? Let's say before I stamped out that Milky Way, I wanted some rocky peaks in the background, okay? Before I stamped out that sky, I would do those rocky peaks in the background. I might want a soft hill in the background of that sort, you know? Like this one right here, here's a, in his cabin stamped out some surrounding areas and I have my hills in the background. That's, you know, you would add something like that, you know, before you did your sky, but we're talking about just very basic compositional structures here, just keeping things easy. Land, sky, all right? Now we start bringing in some colors or whatnot, but let's take a look at some other things right here, because this is starting to get into what I call filler image, okay? imagery. Now a lot of this, I filled in here with some additional um, rocks, the rocks and waves stamp around this one, okay, and that pretty much filled in that area, okay. That sky right there, I needed some filler sky, so I just used itself to fill in up there. I don't want four moons in my sky here, so I have to use this cloud to go around cloud with moon stamp. Okay, same thing. Mackerel sky, use the same image off the sides. Okay, now that's 
kind of the same concept as things in the foreground. All right, but the foregrounds, I mean, naturally, I don't want to have, you know, three cabins in the foreground. So that's where I get into things like filler imagery, okay? This is why I include um, in like the set number oh boy, uh, seven. Is it set number seven? <laughs> I think so. It's the um, Country Chapel sets. A lot of these, um, some of my basic sets like numbers six, seven, and eight have some basic stamps in it like the filler imagery, okay? Things like grass, okay, not this one, but things like this cabin right here, I'm going to fill in at this point in time some additional form, okay? And that anchored that cabin in the scene, right? If you need it, okay? This one right here, I don't really need something down here. You could. Well, maybe I'll do something like that. See, I don't have any filler imagery to put in here. I mean, I could put some trees you know, in here if I want to at this point in time, but I don't need anything in, you know, to really tie this together, okay? This, you know, this cabin's floating out here in the middle of, you know, just this, this space without that image, you know, that grassy texture to kind of anchor it into the scene, right? All right, now we have something like this watermill. Let's say there's some pond down here. I could put some of the other grasses down here as well, but Let's say that watermill has some water textures down here. We can do something like this. Alright, so it's a little bit of water texture going on down there. Um, this thing right here, it really doesn't need it, but and it would probably get much darker, but let's just fill in some areas around here with some additional water texture. Really can't even see it very well because it's a very light color against something very dark. But let's go ahead and fill this in a little bit. These are the filler stamps, okay? Filler, I don't know, land imagery or whatever. Terrestrial imagery, so I have some of that texture down here, okay? And that just kind of filled in that area a little bit. With a thing like a lakeside cove, you can also do things like shimmering down here. Maybe not in this scene, you know, where it's going to be more star-based or something like that. But if this is like a daytime scene, you want to put that shimmering down here like that. You can have that thing where that light is kind of coming across. It would be cool to have a moon down here and have that moonlight shimmering off the water like that, right? Keep this area light. Okay, so what do we have in all these scenes right here? I mean, it's basically a couple layers of depth. We have foreground and background. All right, now just imagine we're going to be coloring in our scenes, adding some additional tones to them. You can check out any, uh, you know, I don't know, coming up on, I don't know, 200 videos here, there's a, 150 other videos where I'm adding color, okay, to my kind of foundation compositions. All right, let's say we got through that coloring, all right? Now, this is how I did it in my workshop, speak, just to keep things simple again. You know, I tell people, okay, you have these two different areas, that's easy enough. Waterfall, sky, right? Two different elements. In this case, it was two stamps, all right? This is two stamps here, too. Well, I actually did a little filler. Three stamps. Two right here. It's not thinking about a ton of things. Cabin, moon. All right? Easy enough. Now, we're going to add on some colors to these scenes. You could do what I'm going to do right now in the beginning as well. But just to push the depth in these compositions a little bit more and I don't know how hard this can be you know but let's instead of having this 
as our foreground, which it is now, it's kind of in the, you know, the most dominant thing close to us, and that's the background. Let's make that a mid-ground. Well, how do you make that a mid-ground, okay? Let's just go in with some foreground imagery. Okay. This is the reed stamp. I like my foreground imagery to kind of be a little bit spindly. Okay. So that you can kind of see what's going on in the background. Now, what do we have? We have foreground is now this. And we've made something that's, I don't know, three feet from us to now that, which is, I don't know, I can't gauge depth, maybe 20 yards away or something like that. I don't know, whatever. So suddenly you've added that space between three feet and 20 yards, right? That's a lot of space there within this scene. So you've added a ton of depth. And what was that? That's one stamp right there. Just stamped one, two, three, four times. Okay. I leave a little space in here. That's what I like to do for the viewer. I guess if you've stamped one right here, it'd be more like a, you know, someone kind of hiding behind something. Okay. Visually. That'd be kind of cool too. Um, all right, so foreground. Let's do a little bit more foreground in here. Here's this cabin. Let's do something, okay? We have that structure. Let's do, how about this fence here, okay? Have a little bit of that fence coming in like this. Okay, there's a little bit of fence there. It's kind of a rustic cabin maybe. And how about a little bit of foreground as well with the reeds. You can do it at different heights like so. Okay, so then suddenly we have foreground and that background. Look how dynamic that makes that scene um, in terms of the compositional elements. It really creates a lot of depth, right? And it's the easiest thing to do um, in terms of a, a simple addition. Okay, this is our babbling brook. Let's say that there's going to be some overhanging tree limb in here. Let's say we're standing underneath this, uh, I don't know, oak tree. This is the oak branch. All right. And we're looking into the scene right here. What this kind of does too, not that you have to do foreground in every scene. Uh, I do it in a lot of mine. But it kind of puts, there's this intimacy about having things kind of close to you or closer to you, all right? For me, it kind of puts us into this scene. Not that you want everything intimate. You know, you can go for grandeur, I guess, where you're kind of up somewhere and you're looking across things and you don't have too many things next to you. But, you know, by putting in things like foreground like that, it really sets us as a viewer or whoever has your card into the scene, okay? It makes it, I don't know, closer, you know? You can touch it almost or something like that sort, right? Or there are things that you can touch, you know, if you imagine you're there. So that's one of the things about scenic stamping that can kind of be a little bit of a different experience to other forms of stamping. Not that this is better, but it's just different. But because we're doing these things that are kind of representative of locations, okay? Natural locations, okay? There's something to being able to put something near you where you can touch it or whatever. This is a visual you know, thing in stamping or something like that. But if you put that near you, it says that, 
okay, that waterfall is pretty close to us, maybe. All right. I don't think it's like, you know, 100 yards away or something like that in the size of Niagara Falls, but, you know, you can put blues down here and it's almost as if you can kind of put your hand and, uh, you know, feel the water. Everyone loves to kind of put their hand in the water, be it kids or adults, you know. How's the water? What temperature is it? Or something like that. And that's what those foreground images, for me, tend to do from a, I don't know, whatever psychological standpoint. Um, okay, let's see here. Okay, it puts us on the shoreline here, right? I can do it in, even in here, you know, there's things like seagrass or whatever. Okay. I didn't happen to grab a ton of, uh, um, things with here. Let's just, uh, you can use those reeds really in theory on a hundred percent of your scenes if you wanted to, because it doesn't necessarily, um, it isn't specific to a pine forest, a tropical area, or whatnot. You can use it anywhere. Oh, but I've used it a lot just now. <laughs> Let's go with this one called, um, what do I call this one? Uh, I forgot. I'll put it in the uh, notes section down below. This is a I'm stamping this in the morning. I can't remember the name of this stamp, but it kind of goes along with this kind of craggly little um, snowy scene. Okay, so we have that type of thing going on in the foreground here, a little spindly branch, which is kind of cool. Um, if I want to go for a little repetition of imagery, I can have it in the background like this too, but I'll mask it off and I'll just use it for a certain portion, right? So I can go for some additional little uh, twigs or something like that, kind of poking through the snow, okay? Sometimes that adds a little bit of depth and it um, just by using a smaller portion of it, it looks farther for, uh, farther back in the distance, okay? So you get that little repetition of imagery, okay? But in here, it represents kind of mid-ground, and here, it represents foreground, okay? Just from the very amount that I use of it. It's, I don't know, it's usage. Okay, so... Let's take a look and see what we have here. Um, sky. Main imagery. Foreground. As far as a compositional build. think those were hard to do, right? If you just kind of think about it in terms of um, a couple different spaces within your scene, it doesn't have to get too complex, all right? One of the fun things about scenic stamping is you can add, you can have a very shallow depth of field, okay? And you can do that for dramatic purposes too. You can have a, a tree or something like that just sitting on a card in the middle of it or something like that without any background in there. It's really focused on just that dimension, okay? I don't know. For me, I'd like to put a little bug or something like that in the foreground, just a couple layers of depth, but you don't have to. I can do a scene that's just all sky if I want to as well. I love doing that. 
um, I love skies, clouds in a Milky Way or something of that sort. And that could be a card in itself, you know? All kinds of themes you can do with skies, moon or something like that, or just light. It could just be clouds um, in a sky. And you can do some kind of word stamp that goes along with it. You know, it's kind of evocative, okay? But let's do something right here, too. All right, this is where I'm just kind of adding this in. You don't have to know these things. I didn't wasn't thinking about this bird here um, when I first started any of these compositions. But let's just do something right here. We have, what do we have in here? We have background, we have mid-ground, and we have foreground right here, right? Well, let's just stamp out, let me see. Let's do something like this. This little bird in the sky, it'd be between this foreground and the background right there. What do people and animals do? They add kind of another layer of depth in here. So with one image, it represents a certain distance within this space right here. So you have, let's talk about the number of layers of depth within the scene. We have grass, that's one. There's rocks and waves in here. There's depth within this image itself, but let's just call it the same space within a certain given, I don't know, few yards. It's two. The bird's in another depth, too. It's somewhere in between, and we have the background. That's four layers of uh, distance within a scene, okay? And that's easy to do, right? Lakeside Cove, background. Not too much foreground running in here, but it's just those reeds right there, okay? So in all of these scenes right here, we're talking about three layers of depth and distance represented, all right? And then, I mean, this is just stamping out a composition. When you start bringing in colors into a uh, scene, you know, like this one right here, I'd probably use kind of these similar tones right here, all right? Oops, sorry. But these tones right here, I think would look great with this one, all right? So, I mean, this right here has a little bit more foreground, but here's those reeds again, and I've used some smaller reeds kind of poking out from, you know, these rocks back in here, right? And that's real similar, you know, to what something I did with this. Just using those same things back here. Those reeds are right in here, okay? This one right here doesn't use any sky imagery, but that's kind of the sky back up in here because I just, you know, streaked some colors in there. But these tones right here would look great with this composition. So even though we have a lot of layers of depth within the scene inherent in the impressions themselves, when you start coloring them, you know, you're going to bring out all kinds of extra depth in here too, especially if you leave some areas, if you oscillate it, some areas are light in here, right? And some areas are dark. And just so I would, for me, I would keep some areas of my sky a little bit light like that, like up in here, and some areas light down here, okay? I have a video on lighting, simple lighting, where I just talk about an area of light up here and an area of light down here. You see this kind of this eight right here? Because it's kind of, I bring in a little bit of tone like that. That would look great into something like this. Um, this is the scratch board one that I just did, but a little area of light up here. Darkness kind of comes in here, and then a little area of light down here. But there's that same moon that I used up here in this one right here, okay? I would leave that area of light kind of right around in here and I would have some of these crashing waves reflecting the light like that. So, you'll do these compositions like that, and with whatever color scheme, whatever color um, coloring method you choose to use, um, you'll bring out additional depth 
through the use of value and just coloring. This is a scene that I did quite some time ago. You can see, here's my foreground, you know. I mean, this is my main subject matter right here, okay? These two figures. And I just filled in with that same grass texture stamp right here, the sedge filler, up here. Now, this is a lot of uh, distance within that given space, right? Here's that same moon again right there, all right? But main imagery, filling in with grass and sky. It's a much larger imagery, but what did I do for my foreground? Here's that same reed stamp again. Masked off here, use the same reed stamp in the distance. Masked off here, use it again right here, okay? So see, it's the same thing going on. This is just a larger format where I have more opportunity, but what changed about it? All I did was just stamp that sedge filler stamp much higher. I filled in right around here, and I just stamped it much higher, all the way up to here, and I put my moon up there. It's the exact same format. I have a lot more areas down here to keep light, you know, so I did that, but it's the exact same concept. I mean, here's quite a, you know, complex scene right here, but I stamped up my mountain right here, okay? Here's what changed about this one. I had, oh, that's that same rocks and waves stamp down there, right in this area, okay? So there's two of them, one, two. Same thing right here, one, two. Instead of using this, I stamped out my figure right here. So there's a couple extra layers in here. I kind of went with uh, this, you know, this rock, and I put this person standing there. And then I have my rocks and waves back there. So let's say if I just um, took something like this and I put, you know, a mountain behind it or something like that, and I put the sky above it. I just added that, you know, extra layer in there, but it's the same process. And instead of my, and for my sky, here's my fountain of light, okay? Instead of like a moon or something like that. So the same thing's going on in that one. It's just that there's more um, opportunities for additional imagery and depth, you know, if you use a larger piece of paper, okay? So anyways, I hope that was a good kind of a, uh, I don't know, uh, recap or rehashing of um, some compositional um, processes that you would go through or could go through uh, when building a scene, especially if you're kind of new to scenic stamping, okay? And uh, I don't know, any one of these I feel like finishing off. Maybe I'll do that for a different video. Maybe I'll have a couple videos where I work on a couple of these ones right here. And uh, that should be a lot of fun. For me, I do like building compositions, and it's, it can be a challenge at times if I'm really adding in kind of some different layering than I've done before. Um, but for the most part, I think things are really simple, you know. Stamp up my name, imagery, imagery, and if I need to fill in, I do it with something like a sedge filler or something like that water pattern, whatever it is, if it's a water scene, okay, rocks. And then I just think about what kind of color scheme do I want. Sometimes when people make requests, hey, can you do something with the lighthouse? I'll say, okay, what's your favorite color scheme, right? And that kind of dictates what I'll use in my sky to some degree, you know, if I'm going to do a high noon scene, you know, with, uh, you know, just uh, the sun up in the sky, chances are I'm not going to stamp out that sky figure in black. I'll keep it lighter, right? So I'll do it in a blue or something of that sort. Or if they say, um, you know, their favorite color is turquoise or something like that, I would probably stamp out my sky figure in kind of a blue, greenish, turquoise color, okay? That's the thing that I'm thinking about in terms of, um, you know, how to approach my sky figure, but still the sky figure is just like, sometimes it's just one image, you know? stamped a couple times, you know, unless you're doing like a really small scene, like a two by two or something like that. This one's going to be sunset color, so I stamped it out in that color. And foreground, it can't get any easier, especially when you're first starting out, just have some kind of thing in the foreground, you know, um, to really push your depth. Um, in this case, it was reeds, just because I happen to have that on my table, but spindly branches are really good in the foreground, okay? Because they give you the depth without 
kind of obscuring the things that are going on in the background. All right. So introduction to compositional builds and uh, easy approach. Okay, that was the one that I used in uh, all of my workshops to begin with. Pick out two stamps, basically. It doesn't have to be two stamps. You know, it could be light rocks and waves pairs up with rocks and waves. Okay, but it's basically two different areas. Okay, and uh, pick out some kind of sky figure. And my other thought was, what color? do you want your scene to be? And color your sky figure a color out of that color scheme and just stamp it in the sky. And that's where we start off with before we start our coloring process, okay? Anyways, hope that came in handy for you. Uh, hope you enjoyed the video and hope I explained all that um, in uh, with clarity. Anyways, I thank you for tuning in and watching the video.